If you've been knitting for any length of time, then you know that weaving in ends is an important part of finishing when it comes to your knitting projects. But there are different tools that you can use for that job, and we're going to explore four different types of sewing needles and how you can use them to finish weaving in the ends on your knitting projects. So come along with me as I weave in the ends on one of my finished shawls using all of these different tools to see which one I like the best. Hey Nerdy Knitter, Tanya here. I'm a certified knitting instructor and a master hand knitter, and I believe knitting is a form of self-care. You can take time for yourself and your creative hobbies that you love to do and still create beautiful garments that you love to wear. Now, this video, it's all about the finishing process, and for finishing, I mean weaving in the end, something that we just always have to do with our knitting projects. But there are different tools we can use for the job, and beyond the straight or bent tip tapestry or sewing needles, there's actually some other things that we could try. Now, I haven't tried them, so I thought it would be nice to test them out. So what you're seeing in this video is me testing these for the first time, besides my bent tip tapestry needles, because those are my go-tos. And wool needles I have used once or twice if I have an end that's super short and I just wanna like get it tucked in. That's the only time I've used those. So all of these other needles I've never tried before. They're still in their package. I'm going to be pulling them out and testing them for this video. So I have a shawl that has about 12 ends, I think, to weave in. And you're going to come along with me and do that. And we're going to test out these different sewing needles to see how they work. And we'll test like a couple different methods. I prefer to use duplicate stitch. It's something that's sort of drilled into your head when you take the master hand knitting program. Because it works so well, it really does help to keep the tail on the wrong side of the work and it really locks it in place especially after you wash it that yarn really wants to stay in the pattern that it's created when it's sort of woven in to match the stitches so I tend to use that the most but sometimes I will weave in in other ways especially if it's like a rib pattern or something else where duplicate stitch might be a little more difficult but we're going to test all these needles and compare them to see how they work so let's go to the overhead and take a look so let's take a look at the needles we're going to use for this little test. First of all are my basic tapestry needles. I prefer the ones with the bent tip as opposed to the straight tip needles, but they both basically work the same. So those are my, my current favorites. I'm going to test out these others to see if I like them as well. Then this is a wool needle. It has this little loop on the end of it. That's where you feed the yarn through and you just use it like a needle. And then we have these finishing needles. I've never used these before, but they looked really interesting and I wanted to give them a try. And you can see that they, the different sizes correspond with the Craft Yarn Council yarn weight. So that's interesting as well. You get a whole bunch of different ones and they all um, are based on that size of the, the weight of the yarn that you're using. Here's a close up look at the smallest one, which we'll, we're gonna be using for this video because I'm using fingering weight yarn for this shawl. And then last of all, we have darning needles, and these are pretty interesting. They have like this little hook on the end. If you've ever done like a latch hook kit or something, it has that little latch hook on the end, and that's where you put the yarn through as you're threading it through. Now, are you actually supposed to use all of these to weave in the ends? I don't know, but we're going to test it out and see. So this is a very scientific test and we'll start with my control, the bent tip sewing needles. This is what I use for all my weaving in of my ends and we'll just start with that because that is what I always use and then I can compare the others to see if I like it more or less and I've got a bunch of ends to weave in on this shawl. I'll have a link for the shawl down below if you're interested in seeing what this was but I can see there's a line right in the middle there. It starts with a provisional cast on and my tension wasn't really great when I was working that. But anyway, besides that, so I'm using duplicate stitch here, which basically you just follow the path of like one row of yarn. And this method works really well for weaving in the ends because it keeps the yarn to the wrong side of the work because you're working on that wrong side on the back side of the stitches. It also wants to hold its shape, especially after you've washed and block it like the rest of the yarn. It just wants to stay in the shape that it's in. And it, I, I never have an issue with it poking to the right side of the work or with the tails coming out. It might come out like on the very end if I snip it too short or something like that. But in general, this is my preferred method. And of course, I'll use other ways to weave in ends if I'm doing ribbing or something like that. But for the most part, I prefer to use duplicate stitch. So I'm just going to weave in this end a little bit. You can see right there, it just follows the path of the yarn. And you can't see it on the other side. Looks really good. But then I'm also going to demonstrate, you know, like the average way of, you know, just sort of sliding it in in any different direction. So we'll do that one next. 
So here we go with the second test with this needle, just weaving it in um, in one direction and then in another. I know this is another common way to weave in the ends. I I don't love this one as much because I do find you have to be more careful because depending on where you put your needle, it could show through to the other side. So I'm going to like put my needle through and then check and see on the other side to see if I can see. If I can see the needle, I'll be, I'll be able to see the yarn. And of course, it's the same color, so I'm not going to be able to really see it. But you can see there's the needle right there. So I know the yarn's going to show through between those stitches. So I'm going to move it and adjust it and pick another path for it, I think. Sometimes if you go diagonally, it will be seen less. But I don't like this method as much. I will use this one sort of like if maybe my yarn tail is way too short, then uh, sometimes this is easier just to sort of like slide those that yarn through just to make sure. Now that looks better. I don't see it on the side, maybe a tiny bit right there, but harder to see. So we'll go through in that direction and then I'll just go through in another direction just to make sure it's secure. But that's just how I would use my regular tapestry needle. So let's compare it with the others to see how the others shape up against this one. Let's try our first test. First up, we have the wool needle. So this is just a plain plastic needle with a loop on the end, putting the tail through the end. Super simple, much easier than threading a tapestry needle, depending on the size of the tapestry needle. But this is the smallest of these needles and it's still quite large and thick. So it's a bit of a struggle to sort of get underneath the stitches. I try to keep it to the back. I don't want it poking through. So I'm going to use duplicate stitch here, but this yarn or this needle is very long and it's very thick, even for the smallest one. So it's a bit of a struggle right here, but I mean, actually doing the duplicate stitch isn't, isn't bad. The tail is long enough, but if my yarn tail had been shorter, this would be really difficult because that needle is just so long. And it's kind of on the big side for this, but it's working just fine to do uh, the duplicate stitch method. I can't say I like it better than my tapestry needle. I prefer that because you have the different sizes. They're smaller and easier to maneuver. And yeah, I just dropped the tail right there. But of course, it's very simple to thread it back on. But duplicate stitch seems to be okay. Not as fun or as nice as the basic tapestry needle, but it does the job. Now let's test it going the other way, not duplicate stitch, but just weaving it in in like a standard method. I'm just going to sort of randomly pick locations here. Try not to go straight up and down, keep it on the diagonal. That seems to work just fine. It does that just fine. And of course I like to go in a different direction just to make sure that tail is secure. But it's working fine for this. If my yarn tail were shorter, this would be an issue though. So I'm not sure. I love this. I think maybe for, maybe for crochet, the stitches are thicker. It might work better for that. So let's test our next one. This is the darning needle. So it's got a little latch hook on the end as opposed to just that little plastic loop on the wool needle. And you can see like you have to, it does, it's quite firm. Like it doesn't, it's not very loose. I've had a like latch hook kit before and like it's very loose. This one is very firm. So you just put the yarn in. I'm not sure you'd even have to use that. You could just slide the tail through like a big eye in a needle, but um, let's do some duplicate stitch with this and see how it works. My first feeling about it is that it's longer than my usual tapestry needles. So it's a little more cumbersome to handle. It's quite long with that big hook on the end and it's a little thicker as well. I am using fingering weight yarn, which is on the finer side. So some of these needles feel quite big and thick for this type of yarn. It's easy to use. I do think like the wool needle though, if my yarn tail were very short, it would be more difficult because these needles are so much longer. But on the other hand, you could sort of thread the needle through where you want it to go first and then put the yarn tail in and zip it through. So you could, if you had a short yarn tail, then there are still ways to use these. And I lost the yarn tail there, so I had to put it back in. And I'm just going to continue to do my duplicate stitch here. So I don't really love this one. I don't like the way it, it's very big and bulky. I don't love the latch hook on the end, but I think 
for very short tails, this or the wool needle would work really well because you could weave it in first and then, and yeah, yarn tail gone again. <laughs> so let's test with the other standard way of weaving in the ends, just sort of weaving it in two different diagonal directions. Duplicate stitch worked just fine. It is big and bulky. Didn't, can't say that I love it. And it kept, the yarn tail kept falling out of the little latch hook, but it did the job. So I think this one will be fine as well. And this would be my method, I think, if that yarn tail was too short. I would weave that needle through, check. Oh, you can see, you can see right where it is. It's poking right through. So I'm gonna find a different spot to put that. It's a very thick needle, so it's not enjoyable to use for this. But again, maybe this would be a better one for a crochet project, like weaving in the ends. Those, those stitches are generally thicker. But it's doing the job. It's working just fine. I still can't say this one would beat out my tapestry needle. That's still in first place for me. But this one does work. Last up, we have our finishing needles. Now, these look pretty different. They're sort of this soft plastic, and it's not impossible to thread. It's just a little weird, like, but the plastic is soft enough that you can pull it apart to get the tail through. And the needle is very flexible. And I like that there's different sizes. This size feels more like the size of a tapestry needle I would use compared to the last two, which were very large. And it's working just fine. Duplicate stitch is just fine. The, the tip is sharp enough that I can sort of get between the stitches where I want to go without feeling like I'm going to push right through to the other side. And the, the needle is very pliable. It's an interesting sort of texture. It's very pliable plastic. So it just, it's sliding through very nicely. I, I really like this one. This is really interesting. This might be right up there with my tapestry needle. That's probably not gonna replace it, but I, this is nice, very flexible. Definitely beats the other two. I would say it might be tied with my tapestry needle. And I like that it has different sizes. I'm gonna to have to do more tests from some other projects and see if the larger needle sizes are just as pliable and flexible. I really like that feature that it just feels like it's gonna glide right through. using the other weaving method, just weaving on the diagonal. So once you get the hang of it and you can know you can pull it apart, I still want to be gentle. I feel like I could easily break this, but I like the way it works. So let's just go on the diagonal, see if we can weave that in without it poking through. If I can find a suitable position for it, for it here. Checking the other side to make sure I can't see it over there. Looks just fine. So I I like this needle. This is, I think this is right up there, probably tied with my tapestry needle. But I do want to do some more tests with the other sizes to see if they're as flexible and pliable. So this is going to go right in my little needle case, I think, with my tapestry needles. It works really well. I'm going to weave in the rest of the ends with this needle, I think, and just keep giving it a try to see how I like it. But so far, this has been interesting. I wasn't sure I would like any of these, but I really like these finishing needles. So you'll find links for all of these down below if you wanted to check them out for yourself. But this one is definitely worth a try. And the other two as well. I think they would work well for crochet and I think they would work well if you have like very short yarn tails and you need to get sort of the needle through first and then sort of catch the yarn and zip it through. Then the wool needle or the darning needle would work well for that perhaps. And if you think of some other uses for those, then I would love to hear your experiences and your thoughts on using these different needles. And I'm gonna go ahead and finish sewing in the ends with this needle. 
So that was a really interesting test, trying out all of these different methods for sewing and weaving in your ends, but I think probably bent tip tapestry needles are still my favorite. Do you have a favorite or one we haven't tried? Then I would love to hear about it, so leave a comment and share your tips or the tools that you use to weave in the ends. And if you want to continue hanging out with me, I've put together a playlist with some other videos all about knitting notions, my favorites, the ones I don't like, and things like that. So you can click right there and I'll see you in the next video.